What is up guys, McDoubles back again with a brand new episode and today we're going to be doing another Fell Touched episode and before we start I want to go over exactly what Fell Touched is again. You see Fell Touched for me was something I tried one time, I made my introductory video on Ascension WoW on the Fell Touched mode uh, when I was coming back to it and it was fun, I made it all the way to level 60 but I didn't truly understand how it worked. I decided to give it another try last night and I think I PvP'd for about six hours straight. Um, just constantly going back to a special spot that I will show you guys, I will introduce you guys in a moment if you're not used to it because I want you guys to play more Fell Touched mode. It's very, very fun. If you are an altaholic, then this is going to be great for you because you can level incredibly fast, constantly uh, just reset, you keep your gold when you die. But uh, anyway, let's just go over the Fell Touched overview that we have in front of us. So first and foremost, you have one life, right? But this is disingenuous because when you die in Fell Touched mode, you actually come back to life as a level 20 with all of your gold, and so it's not that deep. You also keep all of the other things that you collect such as any other form of currency. One form of currency is the next point of the overview. You can harvest souls. When you kill players, you click on a ghostly version of them, and then you get fell touch souls, right? And when you get these souls, you can use them as a currency to buy gear for your character, um, to buy heirlooms for your characters, and just very cool stuff. You also get, as I said, ridiculous amounts of XP and, and gear drop rates because you can't trade with other players. There's no grouping, there's no raiding, it's just for PvP. It's just for this idea of like old school runescape, right? When you go onto an old private server in the old days and it was just a PvP private server and you just kind of pour it in, fight people, get loot and have a good time. That is fell touched mode, guys. You also airdrop, right? So you have access to a special place that only fell touched players can go. And they have a portal and that portal, depending on your level, and when you reach max level, you can go anywhere you want. But depending on your level, will give you places that you can go. And you have certain quests, again, unique to the Fell Touch, that tend to put you in a place near where other people would want to be questing. And then you go there and you fight them and you get stuff and you collect good gear. And you constantly come back to life, constantly keep doing these quests and progress your character over and over again. So that when you get to level 60, maybe that second time, you have way better gear than you did the first time. And maybe even better abilities too. Keep in mind, you can only use your Scrolls of Fortune and your Hands of Fate once. So you need to keep these or use them depending on um, how good your build is. If your build is basically you didn't get any of the abilities you wanted, it's not that great, maybe save those Scrolls of Fortune for a better build that you know is going to last you long. You also have, obviously you get pets, um, a variety of different things like that. Again, no mail, no trading, no auctions. You're on your own. High risk only. Kill or be killed. Attackable by anyone. You can use uh, non-faction based cities like Booty Bay as well as Ratchet. Uh, but I don't know if you can use the flight points. But that doesn't matter because let me introduce you guys to the only place you're going to be if you play Fell Touched. And do you see it right here, the Zorum Strand? That is where you first land, when you first make your character, and that's where you're going to go if you want to find 1v1 fights with people of all sorts of different levels. When you kill your first player, uh, you'll probably be around level 29, after that maybe 34, 39, 45. There are going to be benchmarks, right? And there's going to be players of all different levels, and we're all going to drop in the Zorum Strand. So throughout the course of this video, almost every fight you're going to see are Zorum Strand 1v1 PvP fights. Hope you enjoy the PvP-centered video, and I will see you guys at the end. So, despite what you see, I think we might actually have a really good Arcane Dream character. Round 2, Moonfire, Renew, Divine Protection, Arcane Missiles, Fell Touched, and we still have 6 more drafts to go. Like I said, I think this is it. I shouldn't have trolled with the character that I chose, but you know what? We're just going to go with it. So, let's become a Fell Touched. Remaking the original Fell Touched. And what are we going to get? Healing Wave? That's okay. We can definitely take that. Lightning Shield. Ooh, Frostbolt. You can use rank 1s for kiting. Uh, all of this is really bad. I'm just going to take Resurrection. Conjure Water. Slow Fall. Oh my god, Icy Veins. Wow. We could be Frostbeck now. Actually, we could just be Frostmage. And that would work perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and do a Hand of Fate. Ooh, Frost Nova. Oh my god. So yeah, we have to commit to the Frostmage build and just get rid of Arcane Missiles or Moonfire. Um, I'm thinking we get rid of... 
No, actually, I'm going to go with Arcane Missiles. Moonfire can be a pretty nice thing to spam. Very, very nice. And now we have to pick an ability to re-roll. Uh, I'm thinking out of all of these, Resurrection, yeah, that is definitely the way to go. Protection Paladin and a Holy Priest. Okay, let's see what we get. Are you are you kidding? Are you kidding me? In between such amazing abilities as well. Okay, let's see. What are we gonna get to rolling redemption this time? It looks like it was a talented ability that scares me. Oh my god. No! And that is our loot. Pretty decent first kill. It was kind of anticlimactic, but we'll take it. More Hands of Fate and Scrolls of Fortune coming our way. Again, the goal with this account is a frost-centered build. It's going to be really, really hard getting you guys down with all the abilities, but right now, quick rundown, Frostbolt, Water Shield, Moon Fire, Fireball, going to go for a Brain Freeze build, Intimidating Shout, Divine Protection, Renew, Healing Wave, Polymorph, Frost Nova, let's go. And as you can see here, guys, we did pick up Chain Lightning, we got to level 40, and then we were offered Silence, and we got that too, making for a pretty solid Fell Touch character. Keep in mind, this was my first replay through we did pretty good with our ability so far. We are now rocking with a build that has Polymorph, Frost Nova, Frostbolt, Fireball for instant fireball procs, through the Frost Mage Tree, with Moonfire, Chain Lightning, Shadow Protection, Inner Fire, Water Shield, Intimidating Shout, Arcane Explosion, Wrath, Demon Skin, Aspect of the Monkey with the increased 2% uh, damage reduction, through Aspect Mastery Talent, and then Conjure Water, Conjure Food, and of course, Escape Artist. Th this fell touched character is completely broken. Completely broken. So for this clip, uh, we have made it to level 60. I didn't want the lower levels for this particular playthrough to be the main focus. It's going to be mostly level 60 now for Fell Touched on this character. But then we end up dying later on, just like, spoiler alert. And, you know, that's the point of Fell Touched, and we keep playing it. But what you're going to see is a fight level 60 i had just leveled up and i did a 1v1 in winter spring hope you enjoy
So I was still getting my bearings with that one since it was my first real, real fight at level 60, but I think it didn't go too bad. We are opening our Legion Fall Caches. The first one, not too great. The second one, however, we got the Embrace of the Wind Serpent. Incredibly good epic from, I believe, Sunken Temple that we actually got. Uh, on top of that, we got the Eye of Rend uh, and Sendic Bracers. I don't know if that's better than what we have. It is not, and the Indomitable Vest, so basically more vendor trash. And I'll, you know what, I'll go ahead and open these other two with you guys. Let's see what we get from this one. Alright, Shadowcraft. Oh, we actually got a wand. That's pretty good. Uh, in the Rod of Corrosion with 10 critical strike rating. That's very good for a Frost Mage build, which is what we're playing. And let's see, nothing else great. And the last cache. Nice, nice, that's nice. Okay, so... Uh, we got the Chief's Enforcer. It's just, I can vendor that for a lot. Plague Hound Leggings, okay. Uh, oh, Shoulders that we can actually use. This is a huge upgrade. Uh, it gives hit rating and stamina. The, the rest of the stats aren't really important because we had really bad shoulders on. My Lava Lash ability has a chance to grant my party 10% melee haste. I actually am going to keep that in case we do decide to go with a Lava Lash build. Put that in my bank. Uh, we do have Lava Lash, so if we ever wanted to take Storm Strike, like Reset, Deep Freeze, and everything like that, uh, we could definitely do that and have a pretty cool hybrid build, but I do want to try being a caster for once. So I'm going to go ahead and sell all of this stuff. Nice, we actually got a decent amount of money off of all that. Okay, let's go ahead and open another Legion Fall Cache. I really enjoy opening these, and hopefully we get something good from it. Ooh, Leg Plates of Valor. That's not bad, but unfortunately we're fell touched, so it's not great. Uh, a new wand, uh, but this one is not as good as the one we have because we just want to use it as a stat stick. And then we have more Vendor Trash, and then Black Dragon Scale Breastplate, but again, we are fell touched. So this one wasn't too special, more like maybe like six or seven gold worth of Vendor Trash. But what I was able to do with the honor from a Winter Paw... Uh, cub slaughtering quest. I was able to get the two piece PvP set, Knight Lieutenant Silk Gloves and Boots, and that's going to give me the two piece bonus for 12 spell power. Overall, our gear is looking pretty. We have the helmet from the person we PK'd, uh, as well as the necklace, and we have Splint Hide Shoulders, the Caretaker's Cape, Embrace of the Wind Serpent, Sergeant Master's Dragon Hide Arm Splints, Redemption, Rod of Corrosion, again the two piece, as I said, Highlander's Girdle, uh, the legs we PK'd from that guy. Lorekeeper's Ring, uh, then we have the Bloody Emerald Flame Ring, and then we have the Rune of Perfection and the Insignia of the Alliance. Doing pretty good for gear right now because I've only been level 60 for like 15 or 20 minutes. Of course I wasn't recording. Well, we killed somebody and we got all his stuff as you can see here, but it looks like there's another person here now. And just like that, two down, easy mode. This dude's telling me don't run away in the chat too before I kill him. And he attacks me when I'm not even ready. GG, both of you, GG. I'm going to go back and sell my stuff and use my honor. So as a fell touch, the way I think you should handle your loot is you start off by selling all of the green uncommon crap. And then you take a look at the rare stuff and you ask yourself, can I use the RE that's on it? And if it's not something you can use you get rid of it so as i'm looking at this i can't use that can't use that can't use that or that or that there is nothing on that nothing on that frost damage spells with chilling effects have a four percent chance to cause your next fireball or frost fireball spell to be instant cast and cost no mana i can use that i uh, cannot use that and we don't need another one of these nice let's actually go ahead and see if we can extract that somehow and uh, start using that as soon as possible because getting three out of three on that or of that on my gear would be very very good right now all right i'm gonna go ahead and put brain freeze on three pieces of gear now guys that was pretty easy and that's gonna be an extra 12 percent chance to make my next fireball instant cast and cost no mana
see, that's one of those kind of fights that you just know you're going to win the entire time, so you just have as much fun as you can during the process of it. So that's why there was like a little twirl at the end. But uh, yeah, GG to Fez, I think that was his name. He was pretty good. Not a bad player at all. But the Hunter builds are not too great. That's what I've noticed. Alright, after a pretty successful kill, I decided why not just re-roll a shitty ability. So let's do it, guys. We have just what we need in order to get it done. So I'm going to go ahead and look for the worst possible ability. And we are... I don't think I want to get rid of Lesser Healing Wave in case I wanted to convert to a hybrid build. But I don't think I'm going to. And it's not like my starting build like has any hybrid potential at all unless I like get Storm Strike at some point. Um, after re-rolling. I mean, my point is, Lesser Healing Wave, I don't keep it, right? So, Flash Heal is definitely better for me right now. I say we re-roll it. Let's see what we're gonna get. God, every single thing that I could have ever gotten in this entire loop of uh, abilities was trash. So, yeah, I, I'm not even surprised. So what you're about to see is an incredibly long fight that goes back and forth. Um, there's a point where uh, I, I psych myself out and I'm getting pillar humped. So I have to I have to adjust. I have to change things up. And uh, that's what we do. But it makes for an incredibly long fight. And, uh, well, I'll just let you guys judge it for yourselves. So you can see this is the moment where I knew th this is not working. This is not working at all. We've got to change things up a bit. Okay, pretty decent gear off that guy. We have this bloody Primalist band. We can actually use this ring ourselves, so that's a solid upgrade for us. And then we can get rid of our old Lore Master's ring. And then we also got these Slither Scale boots, which uh, aren't going to be better than my tier gear right now. So we'll sell that, sell that, and sell that. We have a new mantle. This has 9 spell power. This is going to be better for us. It's level 25 though, and I don't want to give up the stamina. So that's getting sold. It didn't have an RE I needed, right? Power Word Shield. No, no, no. Uh, that's not something I need. Well, actually, Spell Power 18. No, it doesn't beat my tier gear. And then the Gazrilla Scale. And then we have a bunch of crap. And then another Rod of Corruption. This one does not have a better RE than my old one, so we'll just sell that as well. And that's that. We made some pretty decent gold off that guy. And it was a pretty easy kill. We had to learn the first time, but once I learned how to win and wasn't getting pillar humped and psyched out, I one-shot him pretty quick, right? I, I mean, not one shot, but he died quick. And that's because I just knew I had to line up my burst and get him out of there before he can start 
getting some momentum, heal himself up, I waste my silence, etc, etc, because I have a mana bar, and it will go eventually, and I don't have a pet for consistent damage, I can only polymorph so many times, so I abandoned the polymorph plan this time, and just went for the kill his ass plan, and it worked, it worked really, really well, so that's just my thought process going into the fight, and how I acclimated between battles 1 and battles 2. So this fight in particular was just interesting to me because every time I thought I was going to win it turned out that uh, the battle wasn't over and so that was that was just kind of a wake up call right because you don't ever know what your opponent has and so uh, typically when you're playing World of Warcraft you get to a point in a fight where you just know you're going to win and some people they, they keep trying their hardest and other people like me we kind of just let it go you know oh well I won the fight let's move on with our lives. I did that too many times this fight and it almost cost me. What will it be? <sighs> and we can use 50 souls now to purchase riding. It actually took me so long to get it because I just didn't need it or care. I leveled so fast and I just asked for 1v1s in world chat and got them. Uh, so yeah, there we go. We can finally ride stuff. That's going to be the end of this one, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. I have a lot more clips to show you guys. Hope you enjoyed. McDouble's out. <laughs>